here in Headington, home of C.S. Lewis, author of the Narnia books. And if you look just over there in the Narnia Park, um, which is the park that inspired Lewis to use the name Narnia for his created imaginary fantasy world, that lion it was in fact the inspiration for the, um, uh, you might say, uh, principal character lion in Narnia, Aslan. When Lewis was out walking here in the park, he spotted that lion and he thought to himself, you know, that really puts the fear of, of God in me. Aha, I know what I'll do. I'll uh, formulate a character inspired by the Son of God who will in fact be portrayed as a lion, such as that wooden lion that you see there. And that is the story behind Aslan and Lewis's Narnia. Welcome back to our Oxford uh, Literary Tour. Yesterday I was sharing a bit about C.S. Lewis, who in fact lived just down the road at the Kiln. We visited his house and the marsh that inspired the Marsh Wiggle Puddle Glum. Now, a little known fact that you might find fun is that in fact C.S. Lewis was great friends with another literary giant of Oxford, and that being, of course, J.R.R. Tolkien, writer of the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. What is not known as well as that is that uh, the gentlemen were often seen walking together and in fact it was in this park, Bury Knowles Park in Headington, that uh, the two literary giants were taking a stroll when they came upon this sculpture of a dead tree that has been carved, as you see, into three animals. ponder the sight before them and both of their brains got to work and Tolkien looked at the top at the dragon and said ho ho a dragon that dragon backed up by a, the air of smog should be in a book I feel perhaps I'll call him smog and that is where the idea for smog the dragon and consequently the rest of the hobbit was born now Lewis also beheld the dragon and he did log that away for future dragons in his books, but he, his eye really travelled down the stump, beheld the lion, which reminded him of the other lion that we discussed last time, which became the inspiration for Aslan the lion. And also he noted the horse, a humble beast at the bottom of the totem pole of animals. Why shouldn't the horse be given a place of honour as well in his story? And so it was this carved horse that inspired noble horse Bree, if you've read The Horse and His Boy. And out of these animals was born the whole nation of Narnian talking animals. And uh, in fact, if you will just look this way, at this bench here, another humble beast that I imagine this is the very bench where Lewis and Tolkien will have sat. And of course their eyes were on this great and noble sculpture, but then as they were pondering, oh, what's this? A beaver. Lewis thought, I can't leave out the beaver. And so, of course, the beaver became an important character as well in Narnia, Mr. and Mrs. Beaver. And so you see that in this hallowed ground of this park is where it all happened, where it was all inspired. Without these sculptures, this park, never. we would probably never have known Narnia or Middle Earth. And there you have it.